guys welcome back to my channel uh, lady survival here or dark lady Solana you might know me as on Twitter um, today I'm gonna be making my first video talking about NFTs and crypto web 3 um, and all that stuff which is really new for my channel if you've been following me for a while you know that I pretty much just make random videos about World of Warcraft my obsession behind me here or I do like hair and makeup or outfits or just random stuff so this is kind of a different video for my channel but I do want to start making more videos like this and I might kind of start like a series so maybe I'll make more videos um, about NFTs and kind of get into the more technical stuff um, about like how to buy an NFT, how to open a wallet for all of your crypto and stuff. For now this is just kind of like an introduction to NFTs and kind of a little bit of my backstory um, and how I've been into NFTs for about like eight months-ish, almost a year. Um, and just kind of, you know, getting everyone on board because I know the general public tends to be like, NFTs equal scam, stay away from NFTs, they aren't real, what even is it? Um, and as someone who's been actually physically in the space and who kind of understands it, I am by no means an expert, I still, there's a lot of things I'm still a complete newbie about and I just, I don't get all of it, but I understand it enough that I thought I could kind of share you know, kind of my insights and stuff in a way that anyone can hopefully understand because I feel like a lot of, like I was trying to look up videos about NFTs, like I was searching like NFTs for beginner and I feel like they're all so like technical and so like formatted, like the videos are so like NFT, what does it mean? Non-fungible token and the blockchain and while all of this stuff is important, I feel like I can talk about it in a much more like real and relatable way. So yeah, anyways, a bit into my background. Um, my husband and I got into NFTs back in like November 2021, uh, back when like you would hear a lot of stuff about them. Like there was random like YouTube videos where it's like, oh, this NFT sold for like $3 million and just like crazy stuff, articles, news stuff. There was just a lot of stuff about NFTs. And for the most part, my husband and I were like, like, is this a scam? Like, what even, like, how is this real? Why would you want to buy a JPEG, an image? Like, what would the purpose be? Couldn't I just save that image? Why are people spending all, the, all of this money? And we decided to just look into it and start learning about it. So we spent a lot of time uh, watching YouTube videos, like learning about what is an NFT? What are all of the slang and like kind of terms that people use? Um, and we found out that Pretty much the entire NFT Web3 crypto community is on Twitter. Um, my husband and I weren't using Twitter at the time, so we kind of had to like learn how to use Twitter and now we're on it all the time and that is 100% where everyone is. I mean like of course there's people on like Facebook and Instagram, but the communities are all on Twitter and also on Discord. So Twitter and Discord is definitely the space to be. I would say start there if you're looking to get into it and start by like watching videos about just learning and understanding what NFTs are and what the blockchain is and just kind of just understand it is a good place to start. Um, so anyways, uh, we really started to get into it. We did all of our researching phase for about like three or four months, just kind of, you know, in our spare time whenever we could. Um, and then around in like May, um, my husband got offered a job in NFTs to do the art for a project. Um, my husband's into like art stuff, so he was posting a lot of his art on like Twitter and Instagram and I guess eventually he caught the attention of uh, an NFT project owner and they were like, hey, can you do the art for us? So NFT projects are a big thing. Um, there is also like just individual standalone NFTs, but um, personally my husband and I and a lot of people are in the Solana ecosystem. I know that that's kind of confusing, but I don't know a lot about it, but for example, like Bitcoin is like a coin that's like its own thing. I don't own Bitcoin really. I think I have like five dollars of Bitcoin. Don't really know much about it. Um, and then there's Ethereum which is also another coin but it's also like another ecosystem. Again I haven't really uh, done much in Ethereum but Solana is where my husband and I first went which is the place where the project owner that reached out to my husband was on Solana which is its own blockchain ecosystem um, and its own like marketplace that uses the Solana coin or Sol as like its currency. So that's all kind of confusing for like a beginner. I'll have to make a separate video kind of discussing like the differences between Solana and Ethereum and Polygon and there's a whole bunch of different like coins and stuff. Um, but my husband and I are on Solana primarily. We want to dabble in Ethereum but haven't yet. 
Um, the main difference is, is that Solana is newer and faster, like a lot faster transaction times and the transactions are cheaper. Um, you have to pay like gas fees to do a lot of NFT stuff, like to mint an NFT and to mint an NFT means to create an NFT essentially, but there's a lot of like transaction fees and stuff, but Solana is a lot cheaper, which allows it to be um, kind of a better place for like newer people to come into kind of a good spot for like mass adoption because Ethereum is really expensive. Sometimes it can cost like $50 or $100 to mint like one NFT, but Solana is like only a couple cents to mint an NFT or something like that. So um, yeah, it just kind of depends. They both have different uses and different reasons why you would go to certain places. But in general, Solana is really good for like um, for example, there's a lot of NFT projects that can do stuff with like gaming and they create gaming assets that need to be minted and kind of need to be real time. So Solana is good for that. Um, and also for like metaverse stuff, um, like a, an example of an NFT that could be sold is like, like a plot of land or like a room in like a metaverse world. And you can like buy that as an NFT and then you can show like, yeah, I own this like apartment in a metaverse world. I haven't really... I don't know anything because I don't own anything in like a metaverse world. Um, my husband and I kind of messed around with the project called Portals. Um, and we've ran around in that metaverse a bit, but we don't really do too much. So just ignore me. I don't really know what I'm talking about in terms of all the metaverse NFT stuff. Uh, basically, the whole point I'm getting at is that there's a ton of different things that NFTs can be. It can be an artwork, like say, for example, if you're an artist and you have an artwork that you want to sell, you can mint that as an NFT. Um, that was actually a question that I got on my Instagram. Someone said, can anything be an NFT? And yes, anything could be an NFT. If I really wanted to, I could grab my phone and take a picture of my coffee cup and mint that as an NFT if I really wanted to. Um, and I could sell it if I wanted, but I mean, I, there would kind of be no purpose behind it. But I mean, yeah, anything. If, if it's something that you drew, whether it's by hand, whether it's digital, it could be photography, um, it could be, um, again, like assets or video game assets, or another big thing is like projects, which will usually have like multiple NFTs. Like for example, Netrunner, the project that my husband did the art for, there was 4,646 NFTs that like all of the art look very similar. There's like some variation, but they're all essentially the same artwork because people can buy into that project and then they get a PFP, like a JPEG, and it kind of is a way that you can like use that PFP on Twitter and kind of to show like, hey, I'm part of Netrunner, like I own a Netrunner NFT, so I'm using it as my PFP so people in the Twitter space can kind of recognize like, oh, cool, he's a Netrunner holder. Or for me, there's two projects that I really, really like. Um, one is D Goddess. I'll show them on here. Um, I found them a few months back, and uh, as you guys can probably tell, their art really, really vibed with me. And I own like 28 of these, so I literally bought 28 of these. I spent a decent amount, not like a ton, but um, Solana was kind of low a while back. It was only like $8, so I got um, a lot of them at like a pretty good price, like maybe like five to ten dollars, but I did buy some of them at like twenty dollars each. So I probably spent a couple hundred dollars on D Goddess NFTs. So I would like wear that as my PFP on Twitter and I'd always like talk about like, yeah, D Goddess, I love the D Goddess project. And you know, like you're part of that community of other people that are within that project and also through buying an NFT, you gain access to that project's utility. Um, so utility is a big word that's used in NFTs, and it's basically every project is different. Some projects, it's literally like, hey, if you buy into our project, you gain access to a community. And that's kind of all it is. Like a lot of it is just super community based. Like if you own an NFT, you're kind of like in with that community. It's sort of like your ticket in, if that makes sense. And then you can go into the Discord, and usually there's like a general chat that anyone can go into, but then there's like separate... Uh, locked chat things that you can only access if you hold an NFT and then sometimes um, you can even have a say in the project so kind of a good way to think about NFTs is kind of like the stock market I don't know a lot about the stock market but I mean it's almost kind of like NFTs are a more fun way to do stocks because you actually get to like be there and talking to other people in the projects that you feel like buying into like kind of the same way like I could maybe buy into 
Blizzard Entertainment because I like World of Warcraft, but that's not really going to do anything for me. It's like I would just buy my stock and be like, cool, I have a stock now. But like, that's it. Like, cool, I guess I'll just track if it goes up or down. But say if Blizzard Entertainment was an NFT project and I could buy an NFT and that was kind of my way of like buying a stock, it's like I'd get like a cool like image. Like maybe I could get like a Sylvanas Windrunner NFT and be like, yeah, I bought into World of Warcraft and I have this like cool Sylvanas and now I can go talk to other people in Discord who also bought into World of Warcraft who are like my people because they also like WoW, like Blizzard, like it's kind of like a good way to kind of come together with your other people. And again, like with D Goddess, like I was talking about, like the art really vibed with me, which means most people who also bought into it probably also like the art, which means maybe they have the same interests as me in terms of, you know, like alternative fashion and like just, you know, kind of dark spooky stuff. So it's kind of like you find your people through the NFTs and it builds connections for you, um, which is good because say if you wanted to try to grow on Twitter, well now you have like this big community of people who know you and you know, like they actually care about you because you bought in, which means that you care enough to have bought in, which means they're probably all gonna follow you and they usually do and they'll start commenting on your tweets, which will help you grow. And then if you wanted to even start selling your own NFTs, like if you were an artist, um, that's actually a really good example. Say if you were like a brand new person who's an artist and you want to start selling your NFTs, but you just got on Twitter and you're like, I don't have any followers. I don't know anyone in the NFT space. Like, how do I mingle with these people? It's like, well, a good first step would probably be finding a project that you resonate with and that you like, buying an NFT and joining that community and then popping into Discord and being like, hey, um, I'm brand new. Like, I just joined NFTs. I don't know anything about it, but I saw your project and I really liked it just wanted to say hi and like I can pretty much guarantee you that everyone will be like oh my god welcome hey that's so cool like let's follow you like you know like you'll kind of get like rated essentially so that's kind of why the community thing is so important there's a lot more like sometimes nfts can have um utility and utility is basically like the value like another example is um a lot of projects have um staking which is where you can buy an nft and then you can stake it, which means kind of like holding it. It's like a website where you can like stake the NFT. And as long as it's held in that website, you'll generate coin. Um, and like each project will have its own coin. Like for example, D Goddess has Goddess Coin, which is a coin that's used in their specific project. And there's stuff that you can buy with the coin. Like for example, they did art upgrades. And in order to upgrade your D Goddess, you need to have some of that Goddess Coin in order to do it. And then another project, So Dead, which actually made me uh, a, an ambassador for them, which is really cool. And another reason to kind of explain, like, NFTs are not a scam. Like, it's actually real, genuine people, so much so that they found me on Twitter, saw my style, saw my vibe, and their project is called So Dead, and it's like a vampire. Like, their PFPs, their NFT JPEGs are vampires. So they were like, wow, this lady girl really vibes with our project. Like, let's make her... An ambassador so I make like videos for them sometimes and I like dress up as a vampire and just make like little tweets about vampire stuff and uh, I'm like really in their community like I only joined them about like two or three weeks ago maybe but they like totally make me feel completely at home and every time I come in the chat they're all like oh like it's lady our lady vamp like and they totally like raided my twitter I gained like three or four hundred followers like it within like a week or something and they were like hella retweeting my stuff and commenting on it and boosting me up and it's like I feel so good being in the so dead community and it's like really cool and I own two three of their nfts um and they're kind of expensive like they were like three or four or five souls somewhere in that range and like I bought them so I spent like a hundred and something dollars to get those two and then I have a special third one that's a lady tribe and it's cool but yeah basically with the nft stuff it's like I actually own those two so dead nfts and my 27 d goddesses or 28 that i own i actually own them and it can be verified on the blockchain and the bo the blockchain is basically like a public record of every transaction so technically all of my nfts that i've ever bought you could go and find those transactions and actually be like okay yeah it shows on you know, like November 2022 that she bought this specific D goddess, like D goddess number 4288. And it will show that I own that and it'll show that it belongs to my wallet address, which means, yeah, someone could technically save that image on their computer, but they don't actually own 
the NFT. Like, it's not like they could sell the image to someone in the NFT space. Like, they could be like, hey, I have this D goddess. Does someone want to buy it? And it's like, well, you have to physically have the NFT because you have to be able to send me the NFT so I can even buy it. Like, no one just wants the JPEG. They want the actual digital asset. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then another thing with NFTs that makes them valuable is that the prices can go up. So say, for example, like there's a lot of projects that have become really, really valuable, but back when they first came out, like on their mint day, mint means to create an NFT. So on the day that a project launches and everyone can go ahead and buy them, it's usually like really cheap. Like for example, it could be like two Solana, two Sol to get in. And then if you buy that, and there's some people who will buy a ton of them, like say if you bought 20 of them, um, a project that comes to mind right now is Famous Fox Federation. I think that they're worth like 100 Sol right now. But I think back in the day, I wasn't even here in the NFT space yet. I think that they were two Sol. If you bought 20 of them at two Sol, and now they're worth 100 Sol, you just made like, I'm not gonna do the math, but you just made thousands of dollars and you physically own them, which means you can sell them. So again, it's kind of like stocks in that way where like you can get in really cheap, uh, buy low, sell high, all of that fun stuff. Um, doing that is called flipping if you buy low and sell high. I'm not really into that. I just kind of find stuff that I like for the art and buy it and I'm like, cool, I have this like vampire goddess character and it's cool. Um, and also my husband and I, um, again, we don't do like flipping or anything, but we do work with other projects and stuff. Like I said, my husband got hired as the artist, so he was able to get a certain percent of the mint. So when all 4,646 of them sold at like 20 or $30 a piece, and my husband got a certain percentage of that, I mean, that's a lot of money. So he made a decent amount of money in that time, and then plus he got royalties, so every time that they sell, he got like a small percentage of that. So NFTs are really cool, basically. Not everyone is gonna be able to work on projects. That's why a lot of people do stuff like flipping NFTs. But if you are an artist, like if you can offer like skills like that, like, hey, I can do the art for your NFT project, or hey, I can be a moderator in your Discord channel, or I'm a developer, I can help you work on your thing. There's a lot of job opportunities in the space. My husband and I personally, do art for NFT projects, and we've worked on a few. Um, again, Netrunner, my husband did, and then Netrunner did an airdrop, which is like basically giving NFTs out to people. Um, we did an airdrop, and we did all 4,646 artworks of that together. Um, my husband and I started our own project um, that is about cats. Uh, we did 999 of them, and we sold out all of them back in September. Um, so between Netrunner and the airdrop that Netrunner did, and then our own project that we started, um, we made a decent amount of money, enough that we are fully doing NFTs like as our full-time job. We both quit our regular jobs and we just do NFT stuff. Um, again, not super typical. I don't really know how many people um, are going to full-on start their own project. That's like a huge... Whew, that took months of work and it's been a non-stop thing. Wouldn't recommend it for anyone, but I mean, I guess what I'm getting at is NFTs are definitely real. There is real ways to make money. You could be like a, a social media promoter person for a project. Like if you're super good with like marketing, you could contact an NFT project and be like, hey, I'll market your project for you. And that could be a job that you have. So basically the NFT space is a very real thing and it's growing and honestly, I believe it'll be the future. I think eventually everything will be NFTs. So I highly recommend hopping on board and with where we're going with AI and everything, NFT space, crypto space, Web3, I think is really where we are going. And I think there's gonna be a lot of like metaverse stuff and virtual reality stuff and it's all gonna tie into NFTs and AI. So I guess that all I can say is I would really recommend at least look into it like you don't have to actually buy an nft but you may as well know about them and understand how it works and maybe be involved in the nft twitter space and all of that stuff there's, there's new people joining the space all the time whether you're a collector an investor if you want to start a project there's just so many opportunities in the nft world and and again if you're an artist you can totally sell your artwork as nfts like go for it i eventually want to make a video explaining how you can mint an NFT and sell it. Um, there's a platform called Exchange Art, which is a place where you can sell 1-1 uh, one, one art, and 1-1 one, one art is basically like a one-of-a-kind 
artwork. So if you have like, you know, like a cool art that you made and you want to sell it as a one of a kind piece where if someone buys that, they own that artwork. It's not like they own the rights to it, like you're still the artist of it, but they can say like, yeah, like this is one of my favorite artists and I own one of their pieces. Kind of almost be like another World of Warcraft example. Um, say if World of Warcraft decided to make an NFT project and if they were like, yeah, we're gonna sell like artworks of all of the World of Warcraft characters and whoever owns them gets to say like, yeah, I own the Sylvanas Windrunner NFT. So like that would be something that I would really want. Like, could you imagine if like World of Warcraft made an NFT project with all the big characters, like the Lich King and Illidan, Sylvanas, um, Jaina, and imagine if they had like a big auction thing where it's just whoever bids the highest gets to say like, yeah, I own the only Lich King NFT. It's like the official from World of Warcraft. There's only one of them and I own it and I spent like 500 grand on it. Like it, it's just really cool. Like that would be really cool if I got to own Sylvanas Windrunner. Not that I have enough money for that, but it's just, that's kind of a good idea of the concept of it. Like, it would just be really, really cool to have that. And that's why, um, that's why in the past, stuff like, um, the first tweet that was ever made on Twitter, that sold as an NFT, because that's just really cool. It's like, yeah, I own the first tweet. Like, that's awesome. And that's something that you could sell again in the future. Maybe it will become worth more. Or, um, the Nyan Cat video, the little rainbow cat with the pop tart on his body that video sold i think for like three million dollars i don't really know i'd have to put it up on the screen because i'm just guessing the whole um the whole idea of nfts is made real because of the blockchain because it can be verified that you actually own it so i guess all i'm saying is nfts aren't a scam um it is very real they do have purpose they do have value it's worth looking into but overall it's not as simple as oh, NFTs as a whole are a scam. It's like, well, no, not the whole entire idea of NFTs is a scam. But yes, of course, there are scams out there. There's scams everywhere, even in our real world. Like, I'm sure your grandma got a call last year or someone trying to take her money. Like, there's scams everywhere. So if you're in the NFT space, of course, be careful. There are people who are trying to scam you and trying to take all of your crypto money and try to take your NFTs. But you just have to be careful. Um, don't click on random links. Uh, don't respond to like weird DMs that seem suspicious. Do your own research. That's a really big one. D-Y-O-R. Do your own research. Um, you just have to be super careful. Make sure you're not like connecting your crypto wallet to any like suspicious sites. Like make sure that you know that where you're connecting your wallet to is safe. Um, and you can also use a burner wallet because um, basically in the NFT space you need to have a crypto wallet um, which is where you hold all of your crypto money um, and then a burner wallet is basically a wallet that you don't care about it's just like a random extra wallet that doesn't have all of your stuff in it so it would be like a separate wallet that doesn't hold any NFTs doesn't hold any money other than like a small transaction fee so if you're going to a site where you're like, I'm not really sure, like it seems like it's legit, everyone else is going to this site to mint this certain NFT project, but I'm kind of hesitant. Um, and it's just always good, like anytime you're minting something or connecting your wallet to anything, if you're not 100% sure that it's like, for example, like Magic Eden is an official marketplace to buy NFTs, like you know that that's safe. But if for any reason you're on a site where you're like, well, this project says that they're minting on this website, but it's like their own personal website, definitely use a burner wallet so that you can link to a wallet that's not like linked to any of your stuff. Anyways, I know that this video has probably just been a big rambly mess. Um, that's typically how I like to go. I don't really like to follow scripts. I just like to wing it. Um, but hopefully it's been more real. Hopefully I've like given some examples that maybe make sense. Um, but the next thing I want to go over is some popular NFT terms and just kind of let you guys know um, what they are. Um, the first one is DYOR, which I went over. Uh, do your own research. That basically just means, you know, like, don't, if a friend's like, oh yeah, this project's super good, it's super legit, don't just take their word for it. Like, actually go check it out yourself, join the Discord, check out their Twitter talk to some other people, find out how people are feeling about it, and read all of their stuff about like what they're offering, what their utility is. Do your own research. Um, the next one is WAGME. This is we're all gonna make it. Uh, this is just a popular 
thing that people say on Twitter and stuff, like if you're in a project and it's looking like really good, it's like, yeah, we're all gonna make it. Like we're all gonna, you know, it's gonna be bomb. <laughs> we're going somewhere. We're going to the moon. To the moon is another thing where, you know, on the, the charts and stuff, if something moons, that means it goes straight up super high. Um, FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, this happens if people are kind of unsure about a project or about a certain thing in the NFT space. It's like, oh, I feel like they're going to rug. Rug means basically just take your money and leave. There's projects that do that, which is, again, why you have to be careful and do your own research. And again, that's kind of an, another example of how there's scams. Like, yes, of course there are scams out there, but not everything in the NFT space is a scam. If someone's saying FUD, that means that they're like FUDing a project. Like, oh, like this project is FUD, you know, like, and it's just, it's just not good. It basically means not good. Don't buy into it. We have a lot of fear and uncertainty about the project. Don't even go there. Some other terms are SOL, which is Solana. Uh, ETH is Ethereum and BTC is Bitcoin. That's just a couple more. Um, HODL is hold on for dear life. That's if you hold an NFT. Um, if it's looking like really good and like the floor price is going to go up. Um, floor price is like the cheapest price of an NFT. So say if you're browsing um, an NFT project thing on like Magic Eden or something, whatever the lowest price, the lowest entry price, the cheapest NFT that is available is the floor price. Um, so if someone's saying HODL, that means like, oh yeah, don't sell your NFT, hold on to it, it's going good, um, you don't want to sell right now. Uh, gas means fee for transactions. Again, any, pretty much any and every transaction in the NFT space will cost um, a fee. On Solana, it's a lot cheaper because it's a lot faster. Um, on Ethereum, it's a little more. So with Solana, if you're minting an NFT, it might only be like a couple cents. But on Ethereum, it might be like 50 or $100. So just lots of gas fees and transaction fees and all that kind of stuff. Um, mint slash minting, I already kind of went over this. It means that you're creating an NFT. So say, for example, if I was an artist and I wanted to... Uh, create an NFT to sell when I create it that means that I minted an NFT and it's been added to the blockchain as a real digital asset. Marketplace is a place where you can buy an NFT like on an official NFT marketplace such as Magic Eden on Solana or OpenSea or Exchange Art and just any like platforms where you can buy an NFT. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's just a couple of popular terms to know. I also remembered another word, which is FOMO, which is fear of missing out. And that's kind of like if you didn't buy into a project and then you hear that it's doing really well and the price is going up and you're like, oh my God, like I have to buy in now. Like I'm scared I'm going to miss out, that kind of vibe. Or if you're just seeing a lot of like hype on like Twitter for a project, like you might be kind of like, okay, maybe I should buy into that. Like it looks like if I don't, I'm going to miss out that kind of thing. Um, the next thing I wanted to do, I had some questions that people wanted me to answer on my Instagram. So I'm going to go ahead. I have to pull them up on my phone, which I'm filming with right now. So I'm just going to pause it for a second, kind of get a general grasp of what people wanted to know. I went and gathered up. I wrote down all the questions that I had from Instagram. Some of them I kind of already touched on just through talking in my video, but I want to specifically answer them. So the first one is what does it look like in the next two years? Personally, I think that NFTs are the future. I feel like a lot of people say that and I can personally see it getting to a point where like everything is an NFT. Like even imagine if like Netflix, like instead of just subscribing to Netflix, if instead you just bought a Netflix NFT and as long as you hold that Netflix NFT, you gain access to Netflix. I don't really know if that would ever be a thing, but like I can just kind of see because that's kind of what NFTs are. It's like you're buying, you buy something so you can get a service. So I can see like even phone companies that you could be like, oh, well, I want to use Verizon. So I own a Verizon NFT. And it's even to the point, like, imagine hypothetically, like with Netflix, if you have the NFT, but the people holding it kind of get to choose how much it's worth. Like, for example, if there's like stuff going on with Netflix and everyone's like mad, like everyone would probably sell out of Netflix, which means that they can list their NFTs and say if it's normally like $15, if like a mass amount of people are all like, oh, we hate Netflix right now. They did something bad. Like, let's boycott them. All of a sudden you might be able to look at the price to buy a Netflix membership 
and maybe it's only six dollars because everyone bought out and kept undercutting everyone it's kind of like the auction house on world of warcraft like it's just you know like something might be worth something at a certain time but then if like everyone's selling it then it's going to go down lower and lower that's just a random random example i don't know if it's real but what i'm getting at is i can definitely see more of the world turning into nfts and more real world companies turning into nfts like i could see amazon prime being an nft and you would have to be like yeah i have an amazon prime M nft and it gives me free shipping and maybe there's other perks that they could add to it um and i think that more people especially with ai and where we're going with AI right now, which I think is freaking amazing. I know there's so many people so scared of AI and they're like, it's gonna take our jobs. And it's like, yeah, well maybe, but other stuff in the past has taken other people's jobs and then there's new jobs and there's ways to do that job better and more efficiently, which opens up new doors. And overall, AI gives people a chance to start their own businesses. Like there's really kind of no more, like if you lost your job, like say if you work at Walmart, and one day there's like robots that now work at Walmart and you got fired because there's a robot that replaced you. You can now go and use AI stuff like ChatGPT to start something that you've always wanted to do. Like say if you wanted to start a book, you could have ChatGPT help you do that. You know, like there's gonna be a lot more opportunities to do your own thing and you have all of the help and all of the knowledge at your fingertips to do anything that you want and it's even to a point where there could even be universal income and now everyone can just kind of start their own NFT projects and maybe the whole world will be NFT projects. And it could be as simple as just this random person named Sarah decided to start an NFT project and maybe she only has 10 people that are supporting her, but they believe in her. So they bought into her little NFT project. And I just, I can see the whole world as being NFTs. It's kind of hard to explain, but yes, I totally think that there will be more of it and I think that we will get to a point where like the US dollar and like actual real money won't be so much of a thing and instead it'll be you know like crypto and stuff all these different kind of coins and stuff depending on you know like where you want to be or what you're using that coin for but I can see our world going like full digital to the point where just everything is NFTs and everyone makes NFTs makes and sells and buys and trades I can just see the whole world being NFTs so I think it's worthwhile to get into. I mean, why would it not get more digital? Like, has there ever been a point where it stopped? Like, has technology ever stopped? Like, we're obviously going to become more and more digital. So I think NFTs and AI together are going to be like a big deal. Just my personal thoughts, but something to think about. Uh, next question. Do you need knowledge before getting into it? Um, yes, I would say so. Definitely, you would want to learn about NFTs so you have a good understanding of it so that you're equipped to do your own research and understand what makes a good nft or a good nft project um just to kind of have like your starting point like kind of your ground of like what you know is good for you to buy and what's safe for you to buy and to not not know what you're doing like you don't want to be in the nft twitter discord space and not understand what anyone's talking about because you don't know the terminology so Definitely spend some time to watch some videos and brush up on all the terminology and get a good understanding of it. Understand how the blockchain works. Uh, understand safety is seriously such a big one, like know how to avoid scams, know how to be safe, know how to have a burner wallet, know how to just operate in the space, you know, like know how to safely buy an NFT. Nothing can be like canceled, like if you accidentally like, if you accidentally send Say you're trying to move money from one wallet to another, or say if I was trying to give my husband some of my like crypto, like if he was like, hey, can you send me all of your crypto because I'm trying to do something? If I accidentally send it to the wrong wallet, like if I copy and paste the wrong wallet address or just click on the wrong thing, like that money is gone. Like, so there's not like a customer service to be like, oops, I accidentally like sent my $1,000 to the wrong place. Can I get that back? Like it's gone if you screw up. Everything's kind of permanent in that sense. So you have to be very technical and very aware because no one's gonna help you if you screw up or if you get scammed, there's not any like customer service or anything. So you definitely want to be super, super safe and super knowledgeable and know what you're doing. Next question, do you enjoy your job now more than ever? Why? Definitely, yes. Mainly because it's a work from home job, which is freaking amazing. That's been my dream 
my whole entire life. Um, I would say like, like, I mean, NFTs are super cool. I don't really know if I'd say that it's like my dream job. Like if I could pick, I'd rather just be like a YouTuber, Instagram person, but I haven't grown it enough because I, I just suck and I'm just kind of lazy. But like, um, again, my husband and I mostly do um, art stuff. And yes, we do use AI art tools to accomplish that. Um, which I know that's a whole other controversial topic, but that's how any of this has been possible. And there's also, I could make videos about AI art stuff if you guys want me to as well, because um, there's a lot of misconceptions and hate and just a lot of weird stuff going on with AI art, but um, it's totally ethical in my opinion. I guess the thing with AI art is again, yes, of course there's bad stuff with it, but it really comes down to like kind of with NFTs, like all of NFTs isn't a scam, but yeah, there is still some bad stuff and there's still some bad people. Same with AI art. I wouldn't say all of it's bad, but yeah, there are some people who are probably specifically trying to steal and specifically doing unethical things, but if you're using it in an ethical way and actually creating your own art that isn't stealing or replicating. Um, there's always going to be some elements of kind of like everyone, every single artist references other artists, even in the real world. And for example, with me, with AI art, like, yeah, I'm probably going to make World of Warcraft inspired art, but I would also do that if I was drawing by hand also. And I do actually want to learn how to draw now, whereas before I didn't, I wasn't into art stuff at all, but through doing AI art, I'm actually like, oh my god, like I love art stuff and I didn't even know that I liked art stuff because I've never even messed around with it before. But now I actually do want to learn how to draw. And if you are a real artist who knows how to draw with your hands or on a tablet or whatever, you can actually utilize AI art to help you do things more efficiently, more effectively, which can then free up your time so that you can do more of what you love. Instead of working for someone else, you can work for yourself. Like you, you can utilize AI to help you do Say if you were like a Fiverr artist, you could help yourself do your Fiverr jobs a lot quicker, which then would free up more of your time to do art for yourself because you love it. So there's a lot of like reasons why AI art is good. It would be a whole, I can't really explain it all in like one minute, but yes, we do use AI art. Um, I think it's really, really amazing. It's an amazing tool um, as long as you're using it ethically and you're not blatantly like, oh, I'm going to copy this person's art and I'm going to specifically steal their art. My husband and I do not do any of that. Everything that we create is um, original and people will use the argument like, but oh, it was trained by other artists, which is true, but that's not how the AI works. Again, I'd have to explain it all, but it doesn't, like if it referenced, say it, ref it referenced these 100,000 artworks, if you ask for something where it would be pulling from those, it's not like, oh, I'm going to grab this element and spit it out. It's recreating its own brand new thing based on what it trained from that data. It's not actually recreating the same thing. Again, whole different topic. I know it's super controversial, but my husband could help me explain it a lot better. He's been doing AI art stuff since like 2016. Um, but yeah, don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But yes, my husband and I do um, a lot of AI art stuff in the NFT space. We offer our skills in AI art, um, which we've been building for over a year. And we've done a lot of projects where we're working like all day long, like 16 hours straight, just like sitting there trying to get a project done as quickly as we can. And it's such like, this is such a cool job and I'm so honored to work from home, but we definitely overwork ourselves sometimes to the point where like two months will go by where we're just glued to our computers. Like we got to get this job done. We got to make this art. We got to it's so it's a good job, but um, sometimes it's just kind of intense and we work super, super long hours. Like that's the one thing I'll say. I've never worked this much in my entire life, like in the past year. Whew, it's been like probably nonstop at least 12 hours a day, every day since like July. No joke, no exaggeration, just all day long working. So it's good and it's bad, but I want to keep doing it for sure. Okay, uh, next question. How can I sell an NFT? So this is going to be one where I'll have to make like a specific tutorial showing you how to do it. Um, but if you really want to, and if you want to look into it, I will kind of explain the steps. Um, first of all, you would have to open a Coinbase account. There is other ones, but Coinbase is the one that I used. And that's basically a website that will allow you to buy crypto. You will need some crypto in order to sell an NFT because there will be like a small transaction fee to do it. 
Um, I think Coinbase can take a couple days to approve because it has to like verify your identity. Um, after you do that, um, you would want to make a phantom wallet. You can just search phantom wallet on Google. Uh, make sure you go to the official site and download the Google Chrome extension for a phantom wallet. And then from there, you would want to go to a site called Exchange Art. That's one that I use and a lot of people I know use. Um, and you can link your phantom wallet to Exchange Art, um, which allows you to create an account. And then from there, you can uh, create an NFT and basically it will prompt you to upload whatever file. So if you have like an image file on your computer or a video or a JPEG, GIF, anything of that kind, um, you can just upload it just like how you would upload any other image to any other site. And then you will go ahead and give it a name and a description. And then you'll go ahead and click the mint button. And then it'll pop up a transaction on your phantom wallet saying, we want you to approve the transaction. You would go ahead and approve it. It would cost a small transaction fee. And then it sometimes take a, takes a few hours for them to um, approve your NFT. But as soon as it's been approved, you're good to list it for sale. You can pick um, the price that you wanna sell it for, or you can do an auction for it. And uh, yeah, you could post it as like a buy it now thing. And then your friend, uh, I know that in your question, you said a friend wanted to buy an NFT. So you could be like, hey, here's my NFT and just link them to it. And then they would be able to buy it. Um, that example I gave is for Solana using a phantom wallet. So if you wanted to sell it on like a different platform other than Solana or other than Exchange Art, there's other ways to do it, but it's pretty much the same process. Pretty much you need to get some crypto, pick where you want to sell it, upload it, mint it, good to go. Next question is advice on how to get started and any personal learning experiences. Um, that's kind of like one of the other questions. Do you need any knowledge before getting into it? Basically, yes, definitely do your research, learn about the NFT space. You definitely want to understand it before you get into it so that you can protect yourself and be safe from scams and be safe from doing anything like I said, it's like irreversible. Like if you accidentally send something to the wrong place, you can't undo that. Um, so you definitely just want to have general knowledge and general technical skills and know how to use a computer. I would assume most of you do. Um, so yeah, just definitely make sure that you know what you're doing um, before you get started. It's definitely a whole learning experience. Um, I felt like a complete idiot for the first like three or four months, um, even learning how to use like Discord and like getting used to like being in all the different servers and going between all the different channels and there's like announcements from all of the different projects that you're in and stuff and just sometimes you know it's like even just learning twitter like kind of where do you find your communities what kind of hashtags do i use how often should i be tweeting if you're trying to grow or anything like that um so like there's all kinds of stuff like if you're trying to market yourself you'd want to look into like nft marketing and it's just kind of a whole thing but i would say as long as you have general knowledge about what NFTs are, what the blockchain is, and just always be safe from scams and that kind of stuff, I would say you can just jump in and you'll kind of learn as you go, but just be really, really careful. Next question, can any picture be an NFT? Yes, I did kind of answer this earlier. Yes, technically, I could take a picture of my leg right now or my foot might be a good one. There's people with foot fetishes, but yes, anything. If you're a photographer, an artist, um, if you made a little pixel art, graphic thing or literally anything. Yes, anything can be an NFT. If it's a file, you can upload it and create it into an NFT. And last question, are they tied to a specific website? What makes them unique? So that kind of goes into how I was talking about like different projects and stuff. Like, yeah, if you buy into a certain project, they're going to have their own specific, um, maybe a website or like an app or a video game or a community that you'll gain access to. Like for example, um, D Goddess, which is a project that I'm in, versus So Dead, which is another project that I'm in. They have nothing to do with each other. They're their own separate people, their own community. They have their own utility. Um, for example, So Dead has it where you can go on hunts with your vampire, where you can send your vampire on a hunt and then they'll come back with like a treasure chest and you get to open it and there will be like vamp coin which is their special coin uh, maybe you could win like an nft or there's like prizes and stuff that are all kind of nft related um so that's kind of an example of their utility um they haven't come out with that yet and they also have customization where you can like change your character um like their appearance of your nft which is really cool so that's kind of like some perks for buying so dead 
or with D goddess um, again they have their own coin called goddess coin and they offer art upgrades not right now they're not doing them currently but um, yeah every single project will have their own certain thing or again I was talking about Netrunner it's like a tax tool um, all, every project will have their own utility and their own special things that they offer that you will gain access to through buying their NFTs. And then again, some can be like video games or like a metaverse one, um, like portals is one where if you have a portals card pass thing, you can go into the portals world, you can buy like an apartment and like decorate it and stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that the NFTs can be tied to. So yeah, that's basically the main thing that most NFTs are valuable because they give you access to something, which is again, hitting on, um, what do you think the NFT space will look like in the next two years? That's why I can see any random company, like any company could probably be an NFT project because any company or brand is selling something, whether it be a service or a physical product. And I can just see it where in the future you buy that NFT to gain access to that service. That's what I personally can see. So anyways, I think I answered everything. Um, this was just kind of a rambly video just talking about some NFT stuff. I'd love to have any questions because I will definitely make more videos talking about NFTs. Um, but this was the first one, just a little hangout with me and just kind of free, free flow ramble with me about NFTs. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that it was helpful. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see next. Um, I think I definitely want to do one um, where I sit at my laptop or my computer or whatever and fully go over step by step how to like open a phantom wallet and how to buy an NFT or how to mint an NFT and actually make like little tutorials and stuff. So I'm excited for the future of uh, my channel. I'm still going to, of course, do my usual content too. My YouTube channel is so random. Like my husband was like, you should probably make a new YouTube channel to talk about NFT stuff. And I was like, no, it's going on lady survival. Anything that I want to talk about is going here. So yeah. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.